welcome back. I decided to put this in the vlog instead of making a separate e-bike controller video. Uh, I did some more research on this controller. It actually didn't come from BrainPower. It came from some other brand name. Uh, basically, what's probably happened is the guy that he sells all kinds of different stuff, not just controllers. And he probably bought it. He probably blew it up, fixed it, and then sent it back out and sold it to me for 50 bucks. But uh, there's more that I found wrong with it that leads me to believe that it is used. Um, this isn't a simple fact that people have been posting that it was the phase was wrong or the phase angle was wrong or the anything like that. This thing was as smooth as silk when it was running. But the reason why it failed when I gave beans is because the shunt's been messed with, which I'm about to show you. on record all right so if you look at that if we're looking here well actually let me show you what a normal shunt looks like okay this is the shunt see how nice and clean those are that's what they're supposed to look like the reason for that is because of the surface area they're pre-calibrated so if you want to modify a shunt what you do is you put a little bit of solder on the shunt and what that does is it changes the calibration, which makes it so you can draw more amps through the FETs. Okay? That's how you modify a shunt. And as you can see how nice and clean that one is. That one hasn't been touched. This one, on the other hand, not only has it been crimped. You see where they've crimped it with the wire cutters? Which is hilarious. Even I don't do that, but I guess maybe that would work. And big blobs of solder. Uh, to make it even worse, I don't know if you can see that, I'll try and point it out. Down there, there's some loose solder, loose solder balls sitting on the, uh, yeah, see there, look at this, they're loose. So all it would take is one of those uh, solder balls to go over here and short one of these components out, and that would kill it. There's another one there, I bet you it's, it's loose as well, because it's in flux, right? Yeah, see there, it's loose as well. There's a big ball of flux right on the chip that's actually dead right there yeah it's flux yeah so someone's been in here they've modified the shunt as you can see all the all this that solder ball there that big one there on the end of the shunt that's not normal um, see the other side how nice and clean that is that's normal that's what it's supposed to look like not like that and I know why they did that is because they lifted the shunt with wire cutters Okay, and this is the side that they heated up. So they probably tried it with, well, well they, I don't know what they did with it. But uh, anyway, yeah, that's what killed it. And you can see the gap there on that FET. Another gap there. No gap, no gap, gap. Those are all the loose ones. Not the loose one there. Yeah, and I don't know if I can show it, but this is not normal. Okay, look at that. SC, and you get the model number. Different, 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 dirty, different, dirty. You get the idea. This It's been modified for a while. And you can see fingerprints on the uh, actual screws itself. It's not factory. So that clears me. I know I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> Did this a million times and never had issues. Never had one blow up like that though. That's hilarious. The shunt gave it away, guys. I mean, come on, look at that. It's only the one shunt there. So what he probably did is, like I said, he heated that up, pulled it, and then was run running the one shunt on the other side, trying to lower their amps or something. I don't know what the hell he was doing here. But uh, for me too, look at that. He's even got flux on the uh, that resistor there. So for me to fix this thing, what we're going to do first off, you see these things here? These are called gates. And what they do is they handle the lower voltages, okay? They basically control the FET. They switch off and on, they switch the FET off and on. They, they, they very low MA, okay? And when the FET blows, sometimes it will send a full pack voltage through the line and 
and blow up the gate. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the um, the FET. Um, it would be nice if I can just cut the lead legs and leave them there. And just uh, we're just quickly solder a FET to it and do a quick power up just to see if obviously the short is gone. And see if it'll actually spin up. Because if it does, that means the gates are good and it's worth fixing. If not, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, it's been modified so much. Why would I want to fix it? For one, I'd have to pull all the wires because I have to be able to get in here and remove these tiny little little gates, which is going to be a pain in the butt. I believe there's three or four of them there. And when I can see here, one, two, three. Yeah, and that's the blue wire. Wow. Yeah, so that's exactly what will have to be replaced if it doesn't work. Bummer. Anyway, let's uh, pull the FET and uh, see if it, uh, it works or not. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Let's just retest it just to make sure there's no other problems with it. Well, I have never bought a um, controller that's been modified. Nor would I sell one like that. It's disrespectful, man. That one's good. That one's dead. Oh, you did too? No, it was touching there. That's good. Good, good, good. Okay. So that one's got to go. Just make sure I don't mess up and take the wrong one out. That would suck. Yeah, it's not even tight. Let's also check the... Um, the insulator. If you have more than one FET here that's um, shorted to the uh, to the heat spreader, it will uh, short it. They will blow them. No, nope. the insulator is good. It's not pinched or anything, so we're good there. All right, well, let me do this off camera. It's going to take a bit to get this out because you got to heat it up and desolder and everything else, and then we'll. Uh, Drop the other one in and try it out. Well, it came out clean. No, dra no traces were lifted or anything else. It gives you an idea of the um, gates that have to be replaced if it doesn't work. Uh, this is the offending FET. There's the model number on it. As you can see, it's all dirty. Okay, so we got a couple of controllers to choose from. This one here is pretty good. It's uh, rated for a high voltage, so I don't even have to check the specs on this. I know it's going to be good. Um, this is a nice clean removal, so we can just drop this in here, quickly solder it, and hopefully our gates are still good. Um, will I go any further with it? I honestly don't know. Personally, I'd like to remove every FET because I don't trust it now. I don't know what the previous owner did to it, how much he tortured it, or bolted it, or whatever. So come on, really? Thank you. As long as it spins up, I'm happy. If it doesn't spin up, well, then I don't know, I don't know what we're going to do. I'll probably try and repair it off camera, and if I get it repaired, I'll uh, make a video on it. But it's going to take time. All right, so we'll just quickly solder that up. Hope for the best. It's the old one there. Mix that up.
just left that with the loop. Make sure I didn't cross any traces, which I think I did. Give me a minute. I figure I'll let you guys see this. Okay, so the FET has been replaced. Um, ended up sealing it from... Where is it? Where'd it go? Oh, right here. But this one here is ready for 80 volts, over 80 volts. Uh, they even went as far as to cut the last leads on each end and overlap the uh, leads coming out just because they draw so many amps. I also put plates in there. So this one draws a lot of amps. I don't even have to check the specs on the FET to know it's good. Uh, I already checked it for shorts. None of the FETs on that were damaged. It was something else. I believe I did a... Yeah, I, me I remember I did a, a build with this. And the way it was designed, it was inside another container. And that's why it was chopped off like that. Um, couldn't really reuse it just for parts. Anyway, so that's been replaced. It's been double checked. Uh, we double check all our wiring again. Nothing is touching. Let's uh, plug it in and... See what happens. Like I said, the other two FETs could be damaged. It's just that they're not dead shorted. You don't know. Plus, it could be the um, the gates. Oh, no magic smoke. Oh my god. It's alive again. But for how long? Oh wait, before we go any further. Let's power this thing down. One thing I forgot. So juice it. Let's just snug up these um, heat sinks because they're going to get hot. All these fets. Just make sure they're all snug. Don't overdo it because you can actually squish the washers and uh, make this problem even worse. There we go. Now let's see if we can give it some beans and this thing will actually hold together. Okay. I just gotta clean my fingers. I was really hoping to avoid doing anything like this. This is why I like just buying something and not modifying it. But I'm gonna modify that if it does work. Uh, one thing I'm gonna do is replace all the insulators and the screws. Uh, the ones on this one are actually much better. And uh, I might even do the whole, all the fets. It was actually, this This is so cheap, and the solder is so cheap, it was, I didn't even have to really take anything hot to it to get the the fet out. I just used my soldering iron. Usually I have to use a um, a trigger one and just, it's got about 500 watts to get that thing, get the, uh, get the um, solder to flow. So that's, it's pretty easy to work on. Let's see if we can push it a bit and uh, see if it will blow up again. I don't think it will, but you never know. Can you see that? Let's uh, put it on as high as it will go. Five, I guess. Forget it, just put it here. You're not really going to see it anyway. Give her, let her rip. See, that's normal. See, my power supply only draws about, say, 5 to 10 amps. And obviously, this one's going to be modified. This one's modified, so I know it's going to draw more than 20 amps. And for it to conk out like that is normal. And that's what it did yesterday. But uh, it's looking good. Try it lower. If I had to really guess what happened, I'd say a solder ball shorted it out. And when I opened it up to do the review, 
and loosen the solder ball. This is why you got to make sure your surfaces are cleaned. That's normal, I'm hitting the um, over voltage. Yep. Good power supply is just you can't draw too many amps from it. Yep, so it's working. And uh, yeah, it got warm. But uh, yeah, actually, I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave it the way it is. <laughs> if it blows up again, then I will earmark all those fats to go in it. But uh, I'm going to get started on the bike. So there you go. You can repair them as long as the gates are good. If the gates go, then it is a pain in the butt to repair because you have to remove half this wire just to get in there. But uh, we're laughing. We got a working controller. I'm not even going to leave bad, be bad feedback for the guy. He just can't be bothered. Any, if I was just a consumer and I didn't know how to work on this stuff, I, you know, I, I'd be pissed. But I knew what was going on. And seeing the shunt the way it is was a good indication that the guy sold me something used. But for assist only, that's fine. I'm not going to be running any races with the bloody thing. Finish off, I did it off camera. Uh, basically, like on the first video where I showed you the ones that were loose, which was that one, that one, and that one. Which, as you can see, I've replaced that one and that one. First fed on each phase, blue. Um, that one blew uh, a while ago, and then I replaced it, and then that one blew about five minutes later. Same thing when you go to give it beans, it would just bleh, just stop instantly. And it's just funny that that one was a loose one, that one was a loose one, and that one was a loose one. So what happened is, Buddy modified the shunt and probably over-volted the crap out of this thing. Which I'm, I don't see any bulging on the caps, but it was just enough to blow each FET on the first, first FET on each phase. And then he replaced them with ones that weren't the same, which I noticed. And I pretty much replaced them now. So that's just, I replaced all the FETs, well, all three of them plus the insulators. So we'll see how well that does. So far, so good. Nothing's blowing up yet. I just overvolt. I lucked out that it hasn't damaged any of the, um, the hulls or the gates. So... I'm not going to bother with the shunt. I did take a little bit of um, copper and remove some of the solder, but it's not going to. The only way to fix that is to remove, is to uh, swap it out, which I really don't want to do right now. I might do it eventually. Um, replacing it was pretty straightforward. I actually found a better method than um, trying to use the solder gun. Uh, I used my hot air gun. Uh, I set it to 500. I just basically set the uh, controller like this, heat it up on the top here, and what I do first is loosen the screw off and pull the FET away from the, the heat spreader and heat it up until you hear a clunk. <laughs> It'll literally just fall right out. Um, I've done it three times now and it was it was quite easy to do versus trying to use a soldering gun and, and a solder sucker. Um, I think from now on I'm going to be using that. You just have to make sure you don't bump it too much because if you overheat the board, obviously your gates will fall off as well. But uh, yeah, it's it's working good. I'll torture it some more, see if I can make some more fail. Take it easy, guys.